Hey guys, Tim here, and I have some video instructions for you for the USB to SATA IDE cable connector. Now these instructions would be good for any kind of universal SATA to IDE or SATA or IDE connector cable. So let's get started by looking at the product itself here. Uh, the box is going to come with a manual and with a CD. That CD is only needed if you're using an older operating system. For example, Windows 95, Windows 98, or Windows 2000. Anything modern, which really everybody's using right now, Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, Mac OS, does not need this CD. So you're totally going to disregard it. Most of them are also going to come with a little set of instructions. Really helpful to get an idea of the connectors for it. We're going to bring the camera in a little bit and I'll show you what's inside of the box here. Now inside of this box, on the left hand side, we've got a power adapter and that power adapter has a cable to it. Now I'm going to take that out real quick just to give you an idea here. On one end of the power adapter, you have the, pl the plug for the cable and that cable plug is right here. And that connects in right to the edge of that power adapter and then the other side into the wall. And then on the opposite side, you have what's called a Molex adapter. This is this black adapter here with those four golden or bronze looking cable ends. And that's going to plug in to the hard drive if it's a desktop hard drive or a CD-ROM if you're plugging in a CD-ROM into the device. So let's also take a look here and see what else we have. This is a power connector adapter. It goes from the Molex style that would go into the black end of the power cable to what's called the SATA, SATA power style connector. We also have a SATA cable, and that's this little red cable here that'll connect from the main cable into a SATA hard drive. And then we have the cable itself. I'm going to put the box down here. And on the cable itself, there's quite a few ends to it. You have one end that's designed for a desktop hard drive. That's an IDE connector. Those are the ones with the little pins on them. You have one side that's designed for the laptop style hard drives. Again, IDE cable style drives. And then on the bottom here, you have that SATA connector. And that SATA connector is where the little red SATA cable is going to be connected into. So for example, we would just plug that in right here. And that connects right into the cable. The other end goes into your hard drive. So we're going to go out a little bit on the camera. And we're going to take a look here at some of the components and some of the things you would use this with and how to actually connect it up. So I have in front of me two different examples here. On the left, I have a laptop ID hard drive. You can tell that because it's a smaller one. And it's got these series of pins. That's the IDE style interface, the older style. And on the right here, we have a IDE desktop hard drive. And that's again got the IDE pins on there, but it has the Molex connector. Um, that connector is for the power. A laptop hard drive can receive its power from your USB port from the cable. A desktop hard drive is going to need the power brick, the power adapter that comes with it. Connecting this is really, really simple. I'll show you. First step you're going to do here is take your power adapter, and we're just going to move this to the side here, and you're going to connect in the plug into the power adapter. That way you can connect it into the wall and you just push it until it's tight. This side is going to go into the wall in a regular outlet. And this side, this is the Molex connector, is going to go into the Molex port on the hard drive. You simply plug it straight in and there is going to be a little bit of resistance. It does take a little bit of force to get it in there. But once it's plugged in, you're going to see it's nice and flush. And there it's connected. To unplug it, you simply grab and again, it's a little bit of force and you have to pull back out and it'll disconnect. So we're just going to plug that one more time right in there. If you're having difficulties, it may be not aligned correctly. Just make sure you have it straight on and push in. Now your power is connected. You're going to take the actual interface cable. And remember I mentioned that there's two sides to this one for ID. There's the desktop side and the laptop side. You're going to go ahead and take the desktop side. And you'll notice there's a little keying here. There's two rows of pins, but one set of the pins has a pin missing. That is going to correlate on the desktop side of the cable here to a pin missing on this. Now you're just going to take the desktop hard drive connector and you're going to push it right in on there. You can see the cutout is right there. And I'll show you that again here. 
see there's a little ridge here, there's a little ridge there, and when you press it in, it's going to go straight in. Each one of those pins is gonna line up, and now you have the hard drive connected. All you're gonna do from here is connect the other side into your computer, that's a standard USB connector. So just to review real quick, we connect the Molex connector, we connect the hard drive connector. Again, if we try to use the wrong side, you'll notice that it's not going to line up. We go to put the pins there and we go, whoa, there's too many pins and it's not lining up. On a laptop style hard drive, again, you have the one little cutout there, so it gives you a guide as to where the pin's going to go. And then this simply connects right into the drive. And here, it's connected. In the case of the laptop style, we do not need the power adapter. It gets all the power it needs from the USB end here, but that would be connecting a laptop style drive. If we had a SATA style drive, we would simply connect the little red SATA cable, plug it into the base of the cable unit there, and then plug the other end into the hard drive. We would take the hard drive's power connector, if it was a desktop drive, Take the Molex end of that power connector, and we're going to connect these two. Now a little trick here, if you can see, and I don't know how well the camera can see it, but these move. Every one of these cables is tied into one of those prongs, so sometimes you kind of have to line up the cable and make sure all those cables are nice and straight to get the prongs to match for the Molex connector. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to play around there just a little bit and make sure they match up nice and well. And again, this can take a little bit of force. You kind of have to go back and forth sometimes. It's not a hard thing to do, but it's definitely not you know, as simple as some people make it out to be. So there we go, we've gotten the connector together, and we would plug this side into the hard drive that has a SATA connector on it. And the SATA connectors are just lines or rows of gold contacts, and they will fit the ends of these two connectors. This will be for the power side, this will be for the data side. Really simple, we're going to switch over to the computer now so we can take a look at the software and what's going to happen once we actually plug this drive in. Okay, now we're at the computer and we've connected our hard drive to the cable. And what I'm going to do, so you can see the entire process here, is I'm going to connect this hard drive into my computer. Now we're going to plug it into a USB port right now. And you're going to see a pop-up come up once I plug this in here. The lower right-hand corner should come up in just a second. It's installing new device software, and you're going to see it says USB mass storage device. It's also probably going to show you the hard drive. It may also say USB uh, SATA to IDE bridge or USB SATA bridge adapter. There's a few different device drivers, but they're all built into Windows, so you don't need any additional one. Again, you're not going to use the CD that comes with it. That's only for the older versions, Windows 95, 98, and Windows 2000. Windows XP on forward has that built-in driver, and there's our hard drive. If we go ahead and open it, you're going to see that this was a hard drive out of a copy of Windows and it shows up as a new disk. If I go to my computer, and we're going to go down to start here, and we're going to click on computer, you're going to see it shows up as disk drive H. It says local disk H. That's the hard drive that I plugged in. And before it was plugged in, all I had was the C, the F, and the G. I didn't have that H drive. And I can double click on it, and I can see all my files and my folders. If I wanted to copy some stuff off of it, for example, I wanted to get my old documents. Let's go into documents and setting on the old hard drive. We'll go to April PC. We'll go to desktop here. Doesn't look like there's anything on the desktop that I had saved, but let's pick, you know, another example here. We can go to the shared documents and let's go to the my music and we've got some sample music files here. Now this is still on that drive. There's two different ways to do it. We can either select it like that and then we right click and go to copy. Now we can open a new Windows Explorer, a new version of my computer by going to start and clicking computer or my computer. And then we would pick our local hard drive and let's say we can make a new directory here. I right clicked on a blank area of the screen. I went to new, I went to folder and I'm gonna name this old hard drive and I open it. And then I right click again on the blank area of the screen and I click paste and that's gonna paste in from my old hard drive to the new hard drive and that's copying the information. So that's not removing it. The old hard drive still has that information there. See, we're still on the H drive and it's still got everything here. It's just copying it over from the old hard drive to the new one. 
and that's pretty much exactly what we want to see have happen. The other thing you can do, and I'm going to cancel this real quick here, is you can open the windows side by side and you can drag between the two of them. So you can go here and just drag it over and that's going to copy it from one to the other. Now, that's a little more complicated because you have to have both windows open and you kind of need to manage and remember, okay, that's my C drive, I look up there, this is my H1, that's the disk. But you can drag and drop them between files, uh, between the two hard drives, the folders. Now, what I am going to show you here, there may be, you may see on there, that the hard drive doesn't come up. Now, there's a few reasons for that. The hard drive could be defective or the hard drive may not be initialized. The easiest way to check is to go to the start button and then right click on the computer or my computer icon and we're gonna go to manage. You may get a pop-up that's telling you Windows user, do you wanna access this? Click yes. And then you're gonna go to the disk management window. In the disk management window, right here on the left hand side under storage, it's gonna show you all of the hard drives that are in your system. Now you can see on this list that's come up now, you have the primary hard drive that's usually gonna show up as disk zero, and you can kind of tell because see how it has these drive letters on top here? It'll show you, for example, my primary hard drive is two different hard drives. It's segmented into the C drive and the F drive. And I've also got a second hard drive named G. But down here, you'll see this disk number two is your H drive. That's the hard drive I just plugged in. These letters are going to be different for you guys, depending on how many hard drives you have and what the letters are assigned to each one of them. But one of the ways you can kind of tell which hard drive it might be, or if it's detecting a hard drive, is if you go ahead here and unplug it, see how that H drive disappeared? If I go ahead and plug that back in, you're going to see that that drive reappears now in the computer management console for disk management. And that's kind of a way to tell, is it the hard drive that's a problem, maybe it's the adapter, sometimes these things can be bad, or the power adapters can be bad, or the drive itself could be defective. If the drive shows up here but it just says unallocated space, then what it probably means is that the partition table has been damaged you may not be able to recover data off of it any longer without some more advanced techniques that we're not gonna cover in this video, but you can always reformat this drive if you need to. Uh, to format the drive, if you wanted to just use it as a backup, which is a very popular thing to use for these kinds of cables, you would simply go to the Start button in Computer again, and you would find your hard drive. We figured out that this was H drive on there, and you would right click and go to Format. And once you click start, that's going to wipe out permanently everything that's on this hard drive and restore it to a factory new condition where it's completely blank and would be perfect for being used as a backup hard drive or a spare secondary drive. But do not right click and go to format until you are 100% sure you don't want anything because once that format's complete, it becomes very difficult, if not impossible, to recover any data off of it. And again, we can simply see where the drive is. If we disconnect it, you'll see that the H drive is the one that disappears. These letters will vary for you. And when we plug it back in, you're gonna see in a minute or so that the H drive reappears as a new hard drive in there. That's an easy way to tell which one of these drives is that hard drive we're plugging in. Now, if it doesn't show up, you wanna start off by going into that computer management and check there, see if that hard drive is showing up when you unplug the cable and plug it back in as another drive. If it is, it may just need to be formatted and you may not be able to recover information from it. If when you plug it in, nothing is detected, make sure you have it connected. The power's connected, the cable's connected, everything looks good so far. And if that is connected and it still doesn't show up, really the only two possibilities at that point is the hard drive is defective or the adapter cable is defective. The only way to tell for sure is to try it on a known good hard drive. If you purchased it from WorldStart or from another vendor, you would want to go ahead and have them